Hello, I am Jessie the Sleepy Koala, and today I bring you the top 10 worst books that I read in 2021. <music> I'm doing this video as part of Bookmas, which was created by Haley from Haley in Bookland. So a big thank you to her. Coming in at number 10 is Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. I enjoyed this book. The only reason it's on this list is because it was the 10th one down when I looked at my Goodreads. I thought it was a fun vampire love story, and I think that's what it sets out to be. I don't think this book needs to be fantastic. I don't think it needs to be five stars. I think it's completely fine. Being a middle of the road, three star vampire romance novel, it fulfills what it sets out to do. In number nine, Five Dark Fates by Kenda Blake. This book was the last book in the Three Dark Crown series. It was a massive disappointment. There were a lot of things wrong with it. It really overshadowed the entire series by being as bad as it was. It had loose ends, drop threads, pointless plot lines, and for half the book we did nothing. End battle in it was really cool, and I did really like it. It's just the pointless build-up that didn't need to happen really brought the book down, and I did not enjoy it, and it really kind of brought down the entire series for me. Coming in at eighth place, Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Skyward series, and a massive disappointment to me. Brandon had a different vision with this book than what my expectations were were, and this was very apparent. I found that this book had a lot of fluff in it that didn't need to be there. It really did not need to be the third book in this series when you have novellas that have more relevant things happening in them. Why are those not the third book and then this be the side story? That would make so much more sense. This feels like an anime filler arc almost because the rest of the story needs to progress before Spencer joins up with the rest of the crew. I did find that we got amazing lore and some of the world building was excellent. I found the other world building to be just kind of meh, but some of it was incredible. There were really good character arcs in this book, but I do find that this book has points where it's begging the question because you need to know things at the end to fully appreciate or understand them earlier in the book, and that frustrates the hell out of me. If you want to hear more about how this book frustrates the hell out of me, Click on the link up there for my full spoilers Cytonic review. I will put both the spoilers and the non-spoiler links into the comments below as well. In the place of seventh is American Gods. This book just was not for me. I found that this book was slow and that very little seemed to happen. By the point that I gave up, I had spent a lot of time skim reading and speed reading the book because I needed something to practice on and I wasn't missing things by reading it faster. I don't think this book is bad, I just think that this book is just not my taste. Coming in in sixth place is The Memory Thief. The Memory Thief is a book that I DNF'd after 60 pages because I got so frustrated by the characters not having any consistent personality to them, and the main character just meant to be this badass woman, but also she makes dumb decisions and then gets surprised by the consequences, and also needs the plot explained to her, because apparently we as readers need the plot explained to us. No, we don't. Just let us experience the plot. What are you doing? Why are you monologuing exposition about what's going to happen in the future? Also, the world building of this sounded so cool, but it's used as a backdrop, at least for the part that I read, and never seemed like it was actually going to be incorporated in to the rest of the story. I don't quite know how the plot goes because I never got far enough to get into the meat of it, though the plot did sound very interesting. In fifth place is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This is one of the worst books that I read this year. Honestly, I don't know how it made it to fifth place on this list because it was not good. I actually finished the book at least, but I found that there was parts of the story that happened just for the sake of happening and didn't have any relevance. And the main character made dumb decisions and her powers were just 
both overpowered but were not consistent with their power level. It very much depended on the story. There was little plot for most of the book and it instead tried to sustain itself on premise. On top of this, there were characters that just didn't seem to matter at all. So why were they there? I had a big rant about this book on the 17 Shard Discord after I finished reading it because I had so many thoughts and just had to get them out and vent about it. But I didn't like this book. I know a lot of people do like this book and if that's you, that's fine. We can completely disagree on this. You can like this book and I'm not saying that you can't. I know I just, I didn't like this book at all. Book number four is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I honestly can't even remember why I disliked this book except that I DNF'd it and I remember being very frustrated at the writing style and I think the characterization as well. I read this so long ago this year and it's not one that I actually wrote down any review or thoughts for so I have very little memory of what's in it or why I disliked it. But I really thought I would like this. The premise of a found family squad made up of all of these different characters with what sounded like very unique personalities and I don't think they were is exactly my type of jam. Like I love these types of stories but this one just wasn't for me at all. Though I do very much appreciate in the audiobook that one of the characters is, is Australian. I was very pleased with that. Coming in at number three is The Original by Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette Cowell. I despise this book. I really, really did. I found that the characters were very overpowered for reasons and I didn't like the plot very much. I thought the world building was fantastic. It's up there as like really really good Sanderson world building and I loved that part of it but I honestly hated the characters and I hated the plot so there was very little of this story to make me want to enjoy it. In second place we have Zero Day Code by John Birmingham. I didn't finish this book. I found it to be incredibly crude and gross in its descriptions of women and people in general. I don't quite understand the need to describe things with reproductive organs just because you can. It comes across as really juvenile and like you're trying to make people feel squicky, but okay. Also, the plot sounded really interesting and whenever it would turn up I would try and hold on to it, but then it would disappear again and after a third of the book nothing had happened so I stopped reading it. And lastly, coming in at first place is Tell Me Lies by J.P. Pamir. This book I have ranted about so many times now. It is a thriller about a psychologist whose house is set on fire and she starts suspecting one of her patients is involved. This story is damaging to the mental health community. It furthers mental health stigma and trivializes mental illness. I absolutely hated the twists at the end. I thought it was in really poor taste. There was another twist that I thought was really well done and I did really like that one at least. The ending was incredibly convoluted. There were plot lines that seemed to not have a place in the story at all when we start going down them. And overall, I just thought it was not good. Well, thank you for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my mini rants about all of these books. I would like to highlight again my Cytonic review if anyone is interested in hearing more about that just because I did it recently. And I will see you tomorrow for another day of Bookmas. Bye!